Hello YouTube viewers. Hello eBay sellers. I have made the spreadsheet to investigate how much returns I'm actually making on eBay after sales and product costs and PayPal fees and how much it might have cost me for office supplies and my expenses and gas traveling to the post office and I would like to have taken that final sum and divided it by the hours it spent working so I could have figured out an hourly wage but the honest truth is there is nothing left. There are some products that just should not be sold on eBay and it's not necessarily the product. It is the amount of money you're going to get in return for that product. What we're looking here is a very small overview of that month's selling period for the statement of June. The columns in red here are eBay fees, PayPal fees, and this was my investment costs. And you can see after that's all been calculated how much money I have made in this row here. I will make this bigger for you here in just a moment. I just want you to get an overall grasp of what this looks like. You can see here, these red ones obviously must be where I've lost money instead of gained money. Okay, let me go ahead and blow this up for you and show you why it looks like this. And I made it like this so that I could understand easily how to manipulate the data. It comes into these columns here and by date, June 1st here through the 30th, here and then I even have them with the day of the week then I even have them with the day of the week that they coincided with here this number in between is how many units of this product were sold on that particular day I'm gonna make several videos about this whole spreadsheet process this is actually very necessary for you to run a business successfully you need to understand accounting and you should understand how to operate a spreadsheet it's not difficult. It'll take you two, three days and you'll be off and on your way. What I have on each day that I sold an item, say on this Wednesday here, I sold three items. I have those three buyers laid out side by side. That would be one buyer. Here is the second buyer for that day. And then this would be the third buyer for that day. what we can see that I have titled my columns that's their username here that's the price that the item sold for this column here shows you how much shipping was charged to my account if it's red obviously I paid $1.75 out of my pocket because I offered free shipping for that sale that is how much money was left over from that sale and I placed that into this column here titled revenue then eBay is going to come along and take their fee, and that's what this column here is. Then PayPal is going to come along and take their fee, and that's what this column here is. Then how much that product actually cost me was right here. All those products cost me 75 cents a piece. I have them placed in the equation, and that particular item I lost 17 cents on. And you can see here in the column titled return, that's what it's telling you. The next item I would have made a dollar six, and then I lost 13 cents and 13 cents. And then I made a dollar eighty-six and a dollar thirty and then a dollar forty-nine and then I lost thirteen cents and so forth. And you can look all the way down the month just like that. As I look at this, obvious things to do are to remove this product here where I'm losing the thirteen cents. These items can't sell for three dollars. I'm losing thirteen cents. There is a lot to be learned from looking at a spreadsheet like this. I can pull out the cells that are losing me money, like these here. I'm paying $1.75 for free shipping. You see that. And you see every time that product is costing me 13 cents. Well, obviously, I need to pull that product. So, after all is said and done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to the find out on this product and show you how the actual account turned out after the month of June. Down here, I have a running tally. And that running tally here, these are for each one of those columns, how many buyers I had in a day, and that represents buyer one from here to here, buyer two from here to here, and so forth. So if we look across the page again, there's those columns with how many buyers bought in one day. Sometimes I had up to 10 buyers in one day. Sometimes there was no buyer in one day. Just keep in mind that that's just the running tally for that column. This area right here is the running tally for everything overall. So, 
Total gross in sales, I made $321. After shipping, that was $209 in revenue. eBay fees, now this ain't listing fees, this is eBay final value fees only. They took $25 out of that. PayPal fees, they took $43.70 out of that. My product cost was almost $78. That left $78 to finish. Okay, then we have listing fees. Now this is what it costs for you to place your advertisements in eBay. That cost me $15. And we can see here that before I deduct office costs and cost of fuel, that I now have $62.26 left over. Here in the red box, let's get to the grand finale. After gas and office supplies are deducted from that number, there's a total of $2.13 left over. So how big a dollar figure item you have to sell on eBay to start pulling in some substantial overhead? Well those are going to be the topic of the next series of videos I'm going to make and they're all going to relate back to looking at the spreadsheet because spreadsheets are a must for running a business. You have to have them. They're not hard to use, they're very simple. As a matter of fact, I'm going to place you a link to where you can obtain this spreadsheet with all the data missing and then you can enter your own data. It has working formulas in each one of these locations, see, you can see here. And all this is very simple to use and then I'll give you a couple videos instructing you how to use this. Then you can begin to enter your values into the data points here and this spreadsheet will spit you out figures that you can rely on. Just a little more information about how the spreadsheet works. In this column here, it's telling me how many items were actually sold. I had so many buyers, but some of those buyers may have bought multiple units. Well, this one here is actually telling me how many units were bought. Telling me 105. So I had 105 parcels I had to ship. So it's telling me I had 105 items I had to ship. Maybe slight less in parcels as some of those were combined shipping, but not that many. Here is a good figure from out of experience. This is how much time it took to package that. Time to deliver, 20 minutes a day. My post office is two and a half miles away from me. It takes approximately 10 minutes to get there because of all the lights. I don't ship every day of the week, particularly Sundays, holidays, and sometimes I try to pack one day into the next day to try to save gas. So. I'm just figuring that's 21 days that I'm driving to the post office and back. And I've put those figures together and you can see that took me 420 minutes to do that amount of work. Well that's 7 hours. So far we're up to 11 and a half hours in time to pack and time to ship. And that's what this figure is here. That doesn't have time to do with writing messages back and forth to the buyers, making listings, dealing with eBay and eBay screw ups. Printing. Printing out the shipping labels can take you a lot of time because the printer just, it's a printer. It's going to be slow. Okay, and there I got the uh, mileage figure. And you can take all this stuff and enter your own data into it. What I did here, and I'll go into more details, is I went to Google's map and I just did a direct route from here to my post office and it told me two and a half miles. And then I doubled it, and okay, five miles. And I put that in this figure. And all these are workable equations. And so it's telling me that I am driving 105 miles a month. And in fuel usage, that's 7.5 gallons. Well, that's $28.13. So now you can see that that 62.26 that was left over, that took me at least 11.5 hours to package and ship, divide that up. That's less than minimum wage. All right, so now that we're getting down to what kind of items should not be sold on eBay. And what is a dollar value? And this is the way you got to think about it is don't go and look for items to sell on eBay unless they have a minimum dollar value that you're going to sell them for. Otherwise, you're wasting your time. Again, that's coming up in more videos fairly quickly too. Okay, let's look at it real quick and then I'll finish this video. Here was office supplies, total supply costs here, 3201 and now we're going to take that 3201 and add it to the price of gas and then we're going to take it out of that figure right there that was after PayPal and eBay and the cost of the item and that's all that was left two dollars and thirteen cents 
You think that's bad? Last month I've lost money. When I show you the month of May, you're going to laugh. You're going to go, what an idiot. Spent all this time for, for that? Spent all my time to learn because there's nobody else going to show you this. Everybody just wants the car keys and go. And you know what? There's so much more behind it. You can take any one of those programs out there and how to get rich quick. And you're going to make a wreck out of it because there's so much details involved in it like this that you'll never learn unless you get your hands in on it. So yeah, I took a, a hit on this particular product and a couple others. I took a major hit. A lot of learning. I got a lot to share. What you should do is subscribe so I can get that to you. So you can see what it's really like to be on this side of the wheel. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.